So um, it's my great pleasure to announce that today we have two speakers and we continue our practice of uh, um, uh, so of making the attestation, arranging the attestations of PhD students. And today we have a special, uh, special, we have special guests. Uh, the two talks will be given uh, by PhD students from the group of Yuri Kivshar. And the first talk will be given by uh, uh, Elizabeth Meligikazian from uh, Australian National University, and her talk is devoted to structured light in experimental nanophotonics. Lisa, please. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction and for this opportun opportunity to present our uh, recent findings in this area. Mm -hmm. So today I will um, uh, speak about uh, knee type multiple resonances in single particles and how structured light could help us to um, investigate these modes mm -hmm. and uh, how we can uh, use vector beams, which is the example of structured light for uh, harmonic generation in such nanoparticles, uh, how they can help us to observe uh, optical quasi-BIC modes and uh, also to detect phono resonances in uh, scattering spectra of these particles so of the nanoscale. So uh, 10 years ago, when uh, somebody uh, spoke about single uh, nanoparticles, they usually spoke about metallic one, which support plasmonic resonances or could support some magnetic response. But um, later it was found out that if the material of the particle is uh, high index one, and if the particle size is comparable to the size, uh, to the wavelength of the interest, then uh, such particles could also support modes, multipolar modes, and they can be uh, divided into two groups, electric and magnetic one. When we, you change uh, size of a ge geometry of the particle, you can change the position of these resonances or overlap them. Uh, so what is remarkable here is that in uh, dielectric, uh, mean type resonant particles, uh, the electric field is concentrated inside the volume. And here you can see the examples of distribution of electromagnetic field uh, inside a silicon nanodisks at magnetic dipole mode, electric dipole mode, or magnetic quadrupole mode. Because the light is trapped inside the particle, uh, these particles are very good for investigation of light matter interactions in the nanoscale. And one of the simplest examples of uh, light matter interaction is harmonic generation. So it was shown that um, magnetic multipolar modes can be used for efficient harmonic generation in silicon nanodisks or in aluminum gallium arsenide disk, uh, disks for uh, second harmonic generation. So uh, how to proceed further here? You can uh, complicate the structure to um, organizing in some clusters or to um, move to metasurfaces where uh, collective effects are dominant. The other way is to apply structured light to uh, such particles. So by structured light, people um, understand uh, the light with uh, some spatial intensity and phase modulation. And um, during the years, uh, the interest to this um, um, structured light uh, to these light beams uh, doesn't decrease. So in our group, we experimentally uh, studied two types of uh, uh, these beams, these uh, cylindrical vector beams. So I saw on the YouTube channel uh, of the ITMO department and some, um, I mean, the talk by uh, the group of undergrad students who presented the a uh, review of uh, cylindrical vector beams and how they could be described, uh, described and how they could be used. So let me repeat it uh, briefly. Uh, so um, uh, cylindrical vector beams uh, 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 are characterized by the uh, donut shape um, intensity profile. And in each point of the cross-section, the polarization is oriented differently. So uh, two orthogonal states is uh, um, a radially polarized beam and a zimosally polarized beam. These beams are also the solutions of the wave equations like Gaussian beam. And one of the, um, one of the um, 
difference of these beams is how they behave at the focus point. So you could see that longitudinal component of the electric field for linear, uh, linearly polarized or for just Gaussian beam or for asymptotically or radially polarized beam is very different. Its behavior is different and um, um, it also can be used in different applications and defines the area of applications. So these beams can be um, created in different ways. Uh, ways. So we used uh, two approaches. The first one is to use the um, silicon uh, metasurface. So each point of this metasurface uh, could um, add a different phase uh, shift. And that's why we could um, transform our Gaussian beam to um, radial or azimuthal polarized one. Uh, another approach is to use liquid crystals, uh, which also have some spatial uh, distribution and different orientation, orientation in different points. And um, these devices um, can be um, potentially can be used not as a bulk optical element, but also realized on chip. So why we are interested in these beams? Um, uh, the theoretical findings uh, of uh, John Schuller's group uh, show uh, that uh, if we consider a spherical nanoparticle and uh, uh, eliminated by radial or azimuthal polarization, you can selectively excite either magnetic modes in the case of azimuthal polarization or electric modes uh, in the case of radial polarization. So we decided to. Um, to check these um, ideas um, experimentally. And for the case of um, nanodisc geometry and also in nonlinear optical regime. So uh, we had a set of uh, silicon nanodisks and um, the uh, fixed um, laser um, uh, wavelengths. And we scan each um, particle and detect the signal. And indeed, our uh, calculation confirmed it that um, by radio excitation, uh, one could excite only electric multiples. So here you can see the back focal plane image in a linear response. In opposite, when we switch to azimuthal polarization, you could see that the uh, disk who, uh, which were resonant, they, um, if the type of the polarization uh, is changed, they couldn't uh, generate any nonlinear response. Uh, in opposite, the uh, disk which, uh, disks which support magnetic multipolar modes, uh, they uh, became, become efficient for nonlinear optical processes. So we called it uh, the selective um, third harmonic generation. And inter uh, it's interesting to see that um, the same idea of uh, selective excitation of multiples in the linear regime uh, was uh, studied and published only last year. So again, you can see that radial and azimuthal polarization can, um, can, uh, can be coupled to different modes of the particle. So uh, how else can be used um, uh, cylindrical vector beams? Uh, for example, if you consider a crystalline, um, uh, the, uh, the particle of uh, crystal, uh, crystal material, for example, aluminum gallium arsenide, which is uh, uh, potentially good for second harmonic generation. So if you scan uh, the particle by your beam, uh, you uh, could uh, detect the and uh, identify the orientation of crystalline axis. Because when the this, uh, particle and the beam is not aligned, then uh, it's almost similar to the situation when you excite this particle by linear polarization. Um, our group also uh, implements the approach of nonlinear uh, spectroscopy for aluminum gallium arsenide particles. And um, how um, second harmonic generation uh, efficiency um, depends on the type of the uh, excitation. So um, we demonstrated that um, basically indeed the same, we can uh, excite 
different modes, uh, different eigen modes of the particle at the fundamental frequencies or at the double frequencies. Um, but the next step here is to try to um, excite some new type of modes, some special state. And uh, this state is expired by the mechanism of bound states in the continuum. So this concept came uh, to us from quantum optics and is like a theoretical concept. When you indeed can have a state in the area of uh, continuous uh, energy region. So um, uh, yeah. So um, modes which can be uh, which formation is inspired by the mechanism of bound state in the continuum are called uh, quasi BIC modes. And uh, in the case of single particle uh, is the result of destructive interference of two leaky modes inside the uh, resonator. And it leads uh, to the very high quality factors of this mode if to compare for, for example, fundamental me type modes. So uh, to realize this regime, you need to, um, um, change, to be able to change the parameters um, in uh, phase space. And um, uh, the uh, localization or in the distribution of uh, the electric fields inside the particle uh, is azimuthal at the quasi BAC mode. So it was theoretically shown that um, azimuthally polarized pump can be efficiently coupled to this particle which support quasi BAC mode and it can be used for um, efficient second gamma generation. So um, we decided to um, realize experimentally the optical quasi BIC mode in an aluminum gallium arsenide particle on the um, multi-layer substrate. So uh, these particles were designed in order to support a low quality and high quality mode in the um, phase space. And um, when they interfere, the uh, quasi BAC mode should be formed. So this is a SEM image of our single particle. So you could see that it's indeed um, without any neighbors and the quality of this fabrication is quite high. So it's allowed us to conduct the nonlinear spectroscopy. So in the case of uh, uh, azimuthal polarization, so what we did, we have a tunable uh, laser. And uh, when the laser beam um, uh, has azimuthal polarization, we um, applied it to uh, the set of uh, nanoparticles and we observed the uh, high quality mode uh, in, again in the uh, phase space. And in contrast, uh, radial polarization or linear polarization, um, even if they can excite some linear response in this particle, they couldn't couple exactly to this mode. So this is the profile of the intensity. So um, because we have a um, high quality mode and the localiz localization of the field is very high inside the particle, so we were able to achieve a record high on nonlinear conversion efficiency. Um, but um, then we decided to go further. So we know that a quasi BAC mode is um, characterized by the high quality factors and the um, um, strong dependence of these quality factors when we slightly change the uh, parameters of the uh, resonator. So um, one more thing uh, is that uh, if we consider the um, line shape in the scattering, uh, um, in the scattering uh, from this particle, uh, we could see that um, another sign of quasi BAC mode is the uh, diverging uh, symmetry parameter. So the line shape could be described by the uh, funnel profile line shape. And um, 
in the vicinity of quasi BIC mode, the uh, quasi um, the um, final parameter symmetry parameter change uh, its sign. So we wanted to um, realize it at the nanoscale and um, uh, to see if it will be the same if we have a substrate, if we have a real particle, and we have, when we excite this particle by a surprised beam. So this paper was um, um, become, became available online just yesterday. So <clears throat> what we did, um, we um, excited our particles and uh, collect the uh, reflected power. Uh, it allowed us to, um, to conduct the uh, linear spectroscopy by tunable laser. And uh, you could see that um, uh, in the case of azimuthal excitation, we can see uh, the transformation of the line and its shape. Um, in, contrast, in contrast, when we excite the particle by linear polarization, we couldn't see any sharp resonances. So um, when we extract the parameters of these lines, um, we indeed could detect uh, the change of the sign uh, in the vicinity of quasi BIC mode and uh, what it, how it can be summarized. So uh, if you change the size of the particle by just by 10%, you can realize three uh, regimes when the um, when you have a positive final parameter, negative final parameter, and when you have a, a Lorentzian shape and it's a quasi BAC. So, to conclude, um, uh, in terms of um, experiments and the application of um, structured light, um, in our group, we uh, demonstrated the selective excitation of. Um, multiple modes of the particle. Uh, we um, um, applied uh, vector beams to uh, for efficient second domain generation from the particle. And it helped us to observe uh, optical quasi BIC in the experiment as an scale and to achieve a high record, um, record high nonlinear conversion efficiency. And also we um, observed the transformation of uh, final resonances to quasi-BAC mode and from quasi-BAC mode to final resonances. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can contact me anytime um, after the talk, or if you have any questions now, it would be also great. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, thank you very much for the for the nice talk. We have quite uh, quite some time for questions and discussions. So I will probably start from the question by uh, Ivan Sinov uh, in the chat. So uh, the question was uh, probably in two last papers, what was the spectral width of the pump pulses? And did you tune the most important, uh, did you tune it uh, to match the mode line width for optimal coupling? Uh, yes, so uh, thank you very much for these questions. So indeed, um, here's the picture. <clears throat> uh, indeed, so um, if you have a look at the uh, figure C, it's actually the dependence of uh, quality factor of the uh, quasi BAC mode or I mean, the mode which is uh, in the vicinity of it uh, on the pulse duration of our laser beam. So we were able to change also the pulse duration uh, of the beam. So it's some sort of um, obvious result because indeed if you have very short pulse and you have very high spectral widths, uh, it didn't allow you to, um, when you do this spectroscopy, I mean like shift the uh, um, wavelengths and detect the signal. Uh, so it's um, artificially make your resonance, the measured um, resonance broader. And if you use a CW laser or long um, um, uh, long duration pulses, uh, then you actually in optimal regime. So um, we worked with um, um, two picosecond pulses. So it was um, um, optimal for coupling to the mode. 
Oh, okay, thank you. So it, it's re really clear after just looking at the right right uh, hand picture here. So uh, we have another question uh, in the chat, but before that we have a raised hand from the room at the department. Uh, so could you ask it? I'm not sure who is going to ask the question. Please introduce yourself first. Yeah, uh, thank you, Anton. Thank you very much, Lisa. I'm Michael Rubin. Uh, I'm at the department since this seminar from the common area. So uh, I was excited by uh, your results, very interesting. Uh, I have a question. Uh, do you have uh, some idea how um, to generate uh, um, excitation with two vortices? I mean, uh, you excite with uh, single vortices, uh, with uh, one um, duct spot in the center. But uh, do you know some possible exit how to organize uh, a vortex with uh, a beam with two vortices, with two black yeah. spots? Um, Is it possible or so, uh, I mean, I think it uh, should be possible. It depends how, um, um, it depends what is your requirement to the distance between these vortexes? Should they should they be overlapped or they should, I mean the center of them can be distinguished? Uh, I know quite a nice work when um, a particle was excited from two sides by two uh, cylindrical vector beams. So it's also one way of um, I mean try to use this model. So it's an interesting question, but. Um, 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 I do not see uh, any obstacles to realize it, but it should be, I mean, considered for which applications and what exactly you want to do. No, I, because... I uh, can be more specified. If you consider high order uh, me mods, usually it's, uh, for example, magnetic quadrupole and so on, they have uh, two vortices and uh, mm -hmm. other and uh, to efficiently excite this uh, kind of resonances uh, if i understand correctly your first part you need uh, um, a pattern with two vortices uh yeah so um um i do not think that it's impossible because um um so it's a real um, how to say um, experimental picture. So I think uh, it's possible to realize a very complicated structure of your intensity profile. And so potentially it can be used for efficient coupling to the um, some, some high order modes. Um, um, what I'm worried about, so for example, if you use a meta surface or liquid crystal plate, so um, I don't know if you create this second vortex, will it um, affect dramatically to uh, the initial one? Um, but I mean, I think it's just uh, how to say engineering task. I think it's possible. Okay, thank you very much. It's very interesting. Thank you, Misha. Uh, so another question uh, from Sergei Makarov from the chat. So uh, the question is, can, can the record for second harmonic generation be, be overcome? Uh, if we use spherical nanoparticle uh, with closed volume, but with high Q whispering gallery modes? Um, I think, um, um, okay, so, um, so far uh, quasi BAC modes uh, provided us the highest, uh, um, highest efficiency. And the problem uh, of this mode is that if you modify uh, the structure, uh, then they disappear or the uh, quality factor reduced. Or for example, if you add substrate, you also need to know how to try to compensate the presence of the substrate. So I don't think that it's uh, um, practically impossible to further increase second domain generation. Um, but I uh, don't have the ready answer for that. Um, so, um, yeah, for Excuse example... Me, uh, let let yeah. me just clarify the question. So you are talking that the uh, crucial role uh, plays the high quality factor of the resonance. 
But we yeah. all know that if we take a whispering gallery cavity, we can achieve as high uh, Q factors as 10 to the power of 10, for example. So would you expect a drastic increase of second harmonic generation or there will, would be other obstacles on this way? Um, okay, uh, let me try to answer in this way. So um, to my understanding, um, this size, so the particle, um, okay, um, to efficiently couple light to a uh, whispering gathering um, mode, the size of the particle should be much larger than the wavelength. So it's totally different uh, experiment. Um, and I'm not sure that like a energy localization which will be, will be much higher in uh, whispering gallery modes if to compare with quasi BAC. And I still think that it's very depends on the particular material and so on. Um, yeah, so for example, if you take a meta surface, you will get the higher conversion efficiency and you get higher um, quality factors. It's one way to modify your system, but it's... Um, um, so um, my answer is, uh, I do not see fundamental obstacles to overcome uh, our second harmonic generation conversion efficiency, but um, it should be, um, I mean, if you change your system, you change effects and uh, uh, you change the possible applications. So it's just different system. Yeah, yeah. so probably you go from nano to, to micro. micro yes, 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 so it's very different system. So uh, I would also like to ask a question quite relevant to the previous one. So uh, maybe I, I, I believe that it could be a standard question in this community. Uh, so are there, um, so regarding the Q factors that you can achieve in a nanoparticle or microparticle, so uh, is there any fundamental limit uh, or cri criterion that gives you some relation between the maximum Q factor and the size of your, uh, of your particle? <clears throat> okay, um, 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 how to say, a, a real BIC, which couldn't be realized with a single nanoparticle, uh, uh, but real BIC, I mean, without any, I mean, like a theoretical uh, concept, uh, has an uh, infinite quality factor. So why we couldn't have an infinite quality factor? Because we have losses. And we, ho we, uh, we have some energy, uh, uh, I mean, the material itself, the itself can provide some losses and the um, radiation couldn't be concentrated just inside the particles. They uh, there is some leakages and you, um, I mean, even if we consider on our uh, linear uh, spectrum, so um, you could see that there is some radiation from the particles or not. I mean, we can detect this mode. Um, I'm, um, yeah. Uh, um, so again, to answer your question about the connection of the quality factor and the size of the particle. So um, as you could see, um, uh, sorry. Um, so basically there is only one vicinity when the quality factor is the highest and it strongly depends on the particle size. And um, yeah, um, and uh, you all always have a fundamental limitation factor to, to, for that to be infinite. Um, I'm not sure what other speakers' response to this question, usually if it's a typical question. I don't know as well. Uh, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, okay, and definitely, um, for example, in our experiments, uh, the limitation also was the separation of the particles. So you couldn't just 
um, I mean, couple all your power which you have to the particles because there will be some uh, damage uh, threshold. And it's also, but it's, it doesn't relate to the, I mean, the eigen mode itself, which exists without any external station. So um, um, unfortunately, I don't have the, um, I mean, the final answer to this question. Uh, but the quality factor is limited. And basically that's why we needed to conduct the experiment. And that's why I'm doing experimental nanophotonics because in theory, you can say the limitation is this one, but maybe for some reason with real materials, you couldn't realize it. And in experiment, you always have some additional limitations. So that's why it's very important to conduct, to conduct experiment. Okay, I see. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have a comment on this question before we finish and go to the second speaker. Uh, is that you, Misha? Okay, yes, it is me. Uh, I have a comment to the uh, question about spherical shape, uh, because uh, I'm the one uh, of initiator of these uh, supercavity mods and so on. Uh, we studied this question and uh, it is uh, uh, um, the optimal shape is likely to be spherical. Uh, sphere has a maximum quality factor. However, uh, as you know, sphere is a kind of spherical hose in a vacuum, as you know in Russian, Mr. Um, Dale. Okay, so in practice, you always have a substrate, uh, some ellipticity, and other problems with fabrication. And also, uh, when you fabricate disk, it is uh, uh, more uh, available from the technological point of view. So <clears throat> the main question, how to optimize, uh, how to approximate uh, quality factor of disk to the perfect quality factor of sphere. And uh, this um, uh, quasi BIC or supercavity mode regime is an answer. We are really close to the optimal quality factor for the same volume. Mm. Okay, yes. listen, excuse me, and what is the optimal one? So is, do you know spherical. this really for fundamental sphere. relation? For sphere. Sphere okay. uh, and has the uh, maximum quality, possible quality factor for the mod. Okay, and what is the criterion? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I, I have several discussions uh, with uh, Klimov, Simovsky and uh, other professors, and they uh, told that they uh, can prove that uh, sphere is an optimal. I never go to the details of this uh, problem and just believe it, but uh, okay. translate the common opinion. Okay, okay, then we have to believe. Uh, so Lisa, thank you very much uh, for a very nice talk.